In this video, we talk about the West Coast Swing Anchor Step. What's up, gang? Brian B and Miss Megan at West Coast Swing Online. We are talking about the anchor step for West Coast Swing. This question came in through one of the members on our site, Patty, who um, sent this via email. So if you are not currently uh, on our email list, I recommend you uh, head to the link in the corner in this video, West Coast Swing Online. Uh, you can sign up for a free membership, but more importantly, you'll be on our email list. You'll be able to uh, get free stuff from us two to three times a month. Plus, you'll be able to ask us questions, and uh, myself, Megan, and some of our team here will be happy to uh, share resources with you and make videos even like this one. So we're talking about the stretch, I'm going to put Miss Megan on this side, of the anchor step. And Patty's question was about the timing of the anchor step, uh, what we sometimes call and a one or rolling count, and then what to do if maybe her partner wasn't doing things as correctly, how could she make up for it? So if we did two sugar pushes, one, two, three, and four, five, and six, and one, two, three, and four, five, and six. We're talking about the stretch between the anchor and the walk walk in between those two sugar pushes. So what I want to do first is freeze on count four of the sugar push. One, two, three, and four. And on count four, just as an auxiliary tip, I want to maintain a little bit of connection here. Let's say Megan and I have a max connection of 10 between us, whatever we feel is a 10. We want to maybe have about half that at this point. So we have some awareness of one another if we wanted to do things with this. It's not a max connection, but we're aware of it. Now for the five and six, instead of plotting flat footed through our anchor step, which would not allow us to use the beat of music, we're going to roll through our feet toe to heel. So in this case, we're going to roll five, and, and on the six, we're going to strike the ball of the foot. And on the and of six, six and, we're going to move away. And, right? Now we still have the uh to contend, contend with. On the uh, we're going to present our foot and get it ready so that we can move on to the beginning of the next beat. So if we did that again, freezing on count four. One, two, three, and four. Five and six. I have the entire beat of six. This is the beginning of six. A strike on the ball of the foot. We roll back on the and, we start to present the foot on the uh, so we can move seamlessly into the next pattern. So we could go on four days and days about this, but Patty said she liked our videos because they were clear and concise, so I'm going to try to be clear and concise. Um, the drill, if we do this from the follower standpoint and then the leader standpoint, is to practice our anchor step five and six. I strike on the ball of the left foot and move my body away on the and. On the uh, I begin to present my foot. In this case, it's already out in front, so I don't have too much work to do. So I can move on to the one into the beat. Right? If we do that one more time, this is the five and six, the anchor step. Five and six and a one. Now, from the leader's standpoint, uh, the right foot is free for the leaders as we're beginning the anchor. We have five and six, and again, we strike on the ball of the foot, we roll back on the and, but now we have to get this left foot behind us for the uh, so we can move on to the one seamlessly. So if we do that one more time, beginning with the anchor, we have five and six, we move back and we present the foot uh, and we move on to the one. Now Patty's final part of the question was, what happens if your um, leader pulls you too early, right? And that's a little bit of a different, um, skill set that we need to uh, develop. But the easy way to understand it, we have some connection here and I can practice moving into this and away while Megan still feels a connection in my hand. So I have to manage it with my fingers and my elbow drawn back so I can give her a feeling of connection. And then we do the same thing where Megan moves in and out and maintains that connection through the fingers, yes? So developing that skill, there's a bunch of different things we could do, but that's a simple, clear, concise way. So um, now, what happens if we go one, two, three, and four, five, and six, and as Megan's trying to roll back, I pull early, and I'm pulling her onto that foot. You can see her lurch a little bit. The key is, as we're dancing our five and six, five and six, if I were to pull this early, she's gonna allow me to have the elbow, so she's maintaining the connection with me as I'm pulling her. So even though I'm, if you pop back to that, into the six, even though as I'm pulling her into the six, I'm clunking back and I'm moving too early and pulling her, she's still able to do that in her body. I still feel like she's connected, right? I still feel like she's connected and then she can dance onto this foot as uh, she feels in the music, right? So developing the skill to maintain some connection and allow the leader to maybe pull you a little early while still maintaining connection and managing your own body through the six. He leads too early, no big deal, you'll catch up and connecting good time. So that is a little bit of uh, 
anchor step information for you. And again, I encourage you to head over to West Coast Swing Online. Um, link in the corner, probably in the description below. Uh, you'll be on the front page. You'll be able to go ahead and um, enter your email address for a free membership. No questions asked. You get 20 free videos, but then you'll be on our email list. You can ask us questions. We share awesome resources, blog resources, videos that are not anywhere else on the internet we share with our um, email subscribers. At the date of this video, we're in excess of 13,000 people worldwide that get them, so they're really, really good tips. And uh, thanks, gang, and we'll see you on a dance floor here soon. Thank you.